I continue my small mini-series on how to design your own ship build, and today the topic is engineering, testing, and fine-tuning. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous but Down to Earth Astronomy. A while back I did the first part of this video where we're going to talk about how you design your own ship build from scratch when you from go from idea to finished fully engineered ship. And in the first video, which I'm going to link to up here in the more info icon, we talked about how you design the initial um, ship build in a shipbuilding tool like Coololus or EG Shipyard or whatever other tool you might use. But today we're going to talk about how you take that initial idea um, and begin to engineer it, begin to do some testing and fine tune your build so you get something that fits exactly your needs. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use my cube cumber as a uh, example built. And of course, this is already fully engineered, but I'm going to go through the different steps, both if you're brand new to engineering, but also in case you're a more veteran engineer who's done this plenty of time. But there might still be a few good tips and tricks for you in here. So the first step, of course, is to make sure that you have your ship outfitted with the modules according to the build that we made in the last video. So, of course, I've already done this. I have my weapons. As I said, this is already engineered, but uh, just imagine this is not engineered. I don't fit all the modules in the state they are. There is a chance, though, when you do that, you're not going to have enough power. Um, at that point, I would probably just recommend you go over here to the modules, find some of the, for instance, weapons could be a good choice. Maybe if you have a lot of shield boosters and simply go in and deactivate them so you save yourself a little bit of power. I'm going to reactivate that one. There we go. Um, just so you have your ship flyable. Now, as soon as you have that, we of course need to begin engineering. Now, there are many, many approaches to this. We can see here initially our jump range is, where is it here? Is That's actually pretty decent in this one because I, I think we made some changes to the build, so I now have a little bit longer jump range. But initially your jump range might not be very good. And there are basically two ways you can do this. Either you could go and you would often look at your core internals and you could try to find a ship that kind of matches uh, the core internals or at least has higher core internals than you have here. So you have, it could for instance be an anaconda. You could swap the modules over one at a time and fly them to the engineer, get them engineered, fly them back, swap them over the ship, take the next module, fly out, fly back. That's very time consuming. So what I often like to do is to fly the ship itself that I'm actually engineering, even though it might not be able to jump that far, simply because then I carry all the modules and that would be very helpful for us later on, which I'm going to show you uh, in, uh, in a little bit. First of all, I would, since I'm going to go with the approach here that you're going to fly the ship around, the first thing I would probably recommend you do is to go into your optional internals, make sure you have a, uh, there's a fuel scoop included in this build, um, but if you don't have a fuel scoop in your build, I would recommend that you change out something up and maybe to the highest slot, but up in the top for a fuel scoop. It might be that you have to drop a shield booster or a cargo rack or something. If you can drop a module that don't need engineering, that's perfect. But go and get yourself a fuel scoop that's going to make your life a lot easier. If you have the Guardian FSD boosters, that's also a very good idea to um, to fit one of those. And then, of course, swap out for one of the other modules that you put originally. Then you swap it back later on, just to get a little bit extra jump range. The first thing you will then do, again, try to get a little bit of jump range out of the ship. It's our first initial thing that I always do when I engineer. Now... If you are a veteran engineer, there's a good chance if you go into the remote workshop, you can see just as I do here, you will have a ton of great five blue prints already um, pinned. Of course, you could start, if you have that, it's a good idea to start with the, why can't I find it, FSD frameshift drive. And go and get that increased range grade 5 on that frameshift drive. Now, you can't do experimentals, because if I go in here, we don't have access to the experimental effects here, but you can do the base upgrades. Another good one to get started with is sensors. Again, get that. Uh, I always have lightweight pins, so I can go and in instantly lightweight my uh, my sensors. And since there's no experimental for this at all, then there's no need to actually go to a specific engineer to do that. So get the sensors uh, lightweighted if that's part of your build. Only if it's part of your build, then do that. Um, and get the long range on uh, on the FSD. But at the very least get a long range of your FSD. Now, if you don't have anything pinned, of course, you would have to go to um, either uh, Elvira Batuk or Farsier that does grade five to uh, to get your first grade five. And then once you're there, remember to pin that blueprint because it is extremely useful to have. 
But regardless of whether you have the blueprint pinned or not, the first thing I would do is probably go to either Elvira or Farsia just to get that experimental effect on there. So in our case, let's head to, um, to Farsia and uh, let's imagine that we're going to engineer our frameshift drive. So once we make it to Farsia, we can of course will go and we'll engineer our frameshift drive, which of course I've already done. And if you haven't already, remember to pin that blueprint. But you can see here, there's a lot of other blueprints here that are already available. And we should definitely use that to our advantage. You can see here, for instance, now sensors have no experimental effects, but the engines, for instance, have an experimental effect. And just for the purpose of this video, I've fitted a non-engineered engine on this sh ship here. And in this case, I would probably want dirty drive. So what I would do when I'm visiting any engineer, I would always go and say, okay, I'm going to go take Dirty Drive. I'm just going to upgrade it once, finishing the first level, and then add the experimental effect that I want. I want drag drives. There you go. I now have a great one with drag drives. Um, and that means if I have the blueprint pinned from Palin, which does the grade five, I can now go to pretty much any station that's not an engineering base and use the remote workshop to get the grade five and I won't have to go to Palin and I just save myself an 800 light year trip to the Pleiades sector and back. And I would do the same with many of the other modules. This is my first off. If I have shield boosters, grade one, use all, add all the experimental effects and then I can do the grade five remotely if I have them pinned. And if not, then of course I'll have to go to the engineer, but then I can pin it, uh, at least one of the blueprints. So for the shield boosters, you often want several different ones, but so, but, but, but power plant is often in most of my ships, I end up using overcharged anyway. So here I would also be able to go in, grade one it, add the experimental effects. Um, as you can see here, I had, have access to it here. Um, and then upgrade it to grade five later on down the road, um, often remotely. And you can see just by doing that, I could have, and we would then go back to the station. I would then be able to finish my engines, my FSD, um, most of my shield boosters, my power plant, and probably my sensors. I could have done my sensors beforehand, as I talked about, because, but we already got a lot of very useful modules just by visiting one engineer. So this is the key part to take away from your first initial steps. Whenever you visit an engineer, if you have a module that is, um, that's not engineered, upgrade to grade one, get that experimental under, and first when you have the experimental, then you could upgrade to grade five. Now. The next thing you need to do is you need to try and identify the core modules on your ship. And when I say core modules, I don't need core internals. I mean the modules that make your ship tick, the things that makes your ship work. And that would make sure, oh, that would mean that the ship would not work if they weren't there. Now, you might not have those modules in all cases, so they can be a little bit difficult to identify if, if, if you're not um, too experienced with this. Um, but again, I'm going to use my cucumber here as an example. Now, the build here um, focus around using a biweave uh, shield generator with fast charge, which ensures that we're going to get a very fast recharge. So it goes, it, it tries to focus more on resistance and, and fast recharge than having a huge hit point pool. Um, and then in case of emergencies, we use shield cell banks to, uh, to top up our shield if, uh, if things get a little too hairy. But we still have the shield cell banks, but we do not have any um, any heat sinks because we use the weapons. We have beam lasers in here, which has a thermal vent on them. So whenever we fire our shield cell banks, we use the, the beam lasers to cool down our ship, completely freeze it actually. Um, and that's how we manage our heat. So that means that the beam lasers in this case is very, very... Um, it's a very key part of the build. The fact that you have that thermal vent uh on there so this would probably be for me identify as a key component the fast charge of the shield and the um and the thermal vent especially the thermal vent on the beam lasers is a key component that means this the build is not really going to work unless i have that then i have if i don't have them i have no way of um of cooling down my ship and i would probably overheat and take some module damage which we don't really want to do so this is something that we need to do next. This is to try to identify your key components, go out and get those engineers. Same thing applies here. You go to the engineer that you need to go to to get your uh, experimental upgrade um, and then take every other module that, uh, that you have in, uh, and that you, have, that you need to have on the ship. Anyway, 
And once you've done that, once you've engineered your key components, done a little bit of the frame shift drive, just make sure you have enough um, power on your power plant that a ship can actually fly. Then you stop engineering and you move on to testing. You go out, you test the ship, you see how it performs. Now, if of course, not going to be performing 100% to as where it would otherwise be, but it's going to be close enough. It's going to be beginning to give you guys, give you an idea about how the ship is uh, is performing. Did that idea with the thermal vent even work at all? Because it might be that they're simply not cooling enough. Um, and so you have to go out, you have to begin to test these kind of things. So you take your build out, do whatever with it is designed to do. If it's a jumper conda, try to dock it at a station, land it at a few uh, surface outposts, just to see how the ship feels. Is the do you need to have more thrust on your engines? Do you where is the ship lagging? Try to identify if there's any shortcomings in the ship. And it might be that some of those shortcomings is simply down to the lack of engineering. And if that's the case, then you go ahead and you engineer the next set of modules until you kind of eliminated that um, that shortcoming. If, if, let's say that the ship is too sluggish, doesn't turn too quickly, then you finish your engines. You make sure your engines are full engineered. You go back, and if the ship is still too sluggish, it still feels um, too heavy to maneuver, then you have to go back to your original built on um, or whatever site you built it on and try to get rid of some mass. Maybe if you haven't. I don't know what other gear you would use than, than a dirty drive and drag drive, but you might have to try and do some mass here and there to make the ship a little bit more maneuverable. Similar things, if, you're, if, if your damage output is not to power, or if you're having a hard time keeping your weapons on target, or your turret weapon just didn't perform as well as you've hoped, then you go back to the drawing board, you change the ship, you change the modules, and you go through this whole process again. Identify the key modules, engineer them, test. If you like what you see, you continue engineering so it's always like this cycle that he'll that, that is like engineering testing modifying engineering testing modifying engineering testing modifying and at some point you run out of stuff to engineer at which point your ship build is done but you keep going through that iteration right you constantly test the ship before it's done figure out what the shortcomings are if you can improve it with engineering do that otherwise change the build i really hope that you found this um, kind of guide useful. It's a little bit more more detailed, a little bit more in depth. I think when it comes down to the small minute uh, details of how you actually how I actually go through an engineer ship rather than just being a standard shipbuilding guide. Um, but I really hope that you liked it. And again, uh, if you want more detailed Elite Dangerous guide, remember to uh, click that subscribe button and uh, give this video a like so you know you like this kind of thing. So head out there and build your dream ship. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space. <laughs>